Hello, heathens! My name is Happy Viking, and welcome to Frothy Pint of Metal, a show where I take a look at the young and unsung rock bands of the day and give them the attention they deserve. Now, generally speaking, I like to mix it up every episode to keep things interesting and diverse. Like, maybe this one week, I talk about a psychedelic rock band, but the next, I'm talking about really extreme black metal. You know, to keep things fresh and spontaneous. But now, I'm doing something even more unusual. I'm talking about black metal. I, I mean, black metal, metal is done by... Botswana. Sometimes I wish I was so blind. Rather than focus on a single band, I'm going to talk about an entire scene. Partly because there are so many interesting bands coming out of it that it would be a disservice to talk about just one. Because when you think of heavy metal hotspots and hubs of activity, you typically don't think of Africa. But thanks to South African photographer Frank Marshall and his portrait gallery Visions of Renegades, the Botswana scene has been exposed to the metal world as a unique and dedicated microcosm of their subculture, complete with its own traditions, dress code, and local soundtrack. They've even had a documentary made about them. Such is their wicked power. Metal is everything. It's in our heart, our blood. We want to expose the metal scene, the style to show the world that there is metal, there is black metal in the country, in Botswana, and we live for that metal. So I figured I'd weigh in and help promote and showcase their unique culture, and most especially, their killer catalog, which ranges from the hardcore death metal of Rust to the more laid-back and old-school stylings of Metal Horizon. some schlub from the Great White North, so naturally I don't know much about the Great Black South. And I figure a lot of you folks don't know much either. So let's take a hop and a skip over to our friend, the redeemer of lazy students with overdue essays everywhere, Wikipedia. Botswana is a country located directly above South Africa, bordering Namibia to the west and Zimbabwe to the east. And compared to most other developing African nations, Botswana is doing rather well for itself, with a stable democracy, a rapidly growing economy, and a modest standard of living. And like any other country that's dynamic and getting better all the time, it's obviously full of metalheads. Ferociously dedicated metalheads with ferociously dedicated metal bands. Now, I do not want to come across as condescending or patronizing or anything like that, but it is just so fascinating and so heartwarming to see metal develop in such an unlikely place, almost essentially in a vacuum, because from what I've read, the Botswana scene traces its roots back to the fandom of one band, local 70s rock superstars, Nosy Road. The band played cool music, the music got them fans, the fans got into rock, and from there, they found their way to metal. When you lay it out like that, it seems like a natural progression. But even then, most metalheads are surprised by the Renegade's intensity, solidarity, and camaraderie. Metal shows don't happen too often out in the savanna, but when they do, it is a big thing. Everybody shows up, and everybody plays it to the absolute hilt. They mosh, they pose, they swagger, and they show off their righteous rocker regalia, competing to see who can look the most like the Ace of Spades album cover. Some might say it's a bit much. I think it's a good start. And Tumblr says it's cultural appropriation, but who gives a shit? It's fucking radical. These guys are so metal that they make me look like a weeping tweeny bopper, posting Instagram selfies of myself making out with a One Direction poster. God damn, these guys. 
making me feel all insignificant and shit. Also, consider the stone-cold cojones it takes to wear black leather in African weather. Their balls are so large that they have a gravitational pull, which would explain the tightness of those pants. But, in case the size of their testicles was not made evident through their fashion sense, it will be made crystal clear through their music. I think by now I've thoroughly convinced you folks that the renegades care more about metal than you likely ever will about anything. These guys care hard. They take caring to an art form. They make the Care Bears look like the Khmer Rouge. In summary, they care. So let's talk about the scene's other unique and wonderful aspects. The thing that makes the Botswana scene so different from any other is just how fluidly it integrates metal culture with African culture. For example, the Renegade's trademark black leather cowboy style. Of course it's based off of Ace of Spades, but Botswana is also a largely rural country full of farmers and ranchers, so the cowboy look was quite ingrained in the popular consciousness already. Well, the cowboy image is cultural, it's natural, you know, it's, it's something we've got from our forefathers, the parents, when we were boys. Also, we would watch cowboy movies and, you know, I think that's how it came about. It's also not uncommon for them to deck out their uniform with totems and animal parts. Hell, if you can look past this man's ridiculous pectorals, you can clearly see a legit hunting knife on his belt, which I'm assuming he uses regularly to skin posers. That's metal as hell. And of course, being one of the few African scenes, obviously you'll have bands that talk about uniquely African topics, the most prominent of which being Skinflint, who base all of their albums around the local mythology and history. And if you're a culture nut like myself, you should be quite intrigued, maybe a little giddy, but definitely very aroused. But what we wanted to do, we wanted to do something different to put uh, African mythology in the lyrical content in our music and ancestral beliefs that we used to have in Africa. So in the, uh, it was called African Heavy Metal, that's what we did this. Your memory left to exorcise Your soul wanders the night It sets up your corpse Yet with no memory it wanders Having read around a bit, Botswana seems to have a mixed view of its metalheads. Like, obviously you have people who think they're fucking scary looking. Which they are, because metalheads get off on that shit. You know, the way they dress, it's... You know? The different. It's all spooky. But a lot of it comes from the fact that it's a completely alien subculture to the native Botswana, and it just sort of appeared out of nowhere. The country is undergoing a metric shit ton of social shifting and cultural change, and even with that in mind, I don't think anyone was expecting Mad Max meets the village people to be the next big thing. If you don't know them, you start thinking, whoa, do I, you know, do I get close to this guy? It's a whole new culture coming into place. Conversely, however, every interview I've read talks about the collective social responsibility and civic mindedness of the renegades. Hell, they claim that the country's president is actually a metalhead. I don't know if that's true since I haven't seen any interviews from the man himself or whatever, so I don't know. I'm willing to guess that they might be embellishing themselves a wee bit. But regardless of how they're seen, these guys want to represent metal not only at its most brutal and intense, but at its most benevolent and accepting. They do not judge you by your job. They do not judge you by your gender. They do not judge you by your color or where you come from. The only color they understand is being dressed in black or the sound of crunching guitars and pounding drums. That's how you become a rocker. Damn straight. Like I said, they care.
There are metal scenes everywhere, big and small, from Sweden to Nepal. Seriously, you'd be surprised how much extreme death metal comes out of fucking Kathmandu. But no matter how big your scene is, they can all learn a thing or two from the Botswana renegades. Whereas your bog standard metalhead is keen to get drunk and laid, these killer cowboys want to be badass role models serving as the vanguard of progress for a small young nation. If nothing else, they are passionate. I bless the bands down in Africa. They have the same heart and the same passion for the music that unites all metalheads together in brotherhood, regardless of race, sex, or geography. And it's that heart and passion that will keep you coming back to Botswana time and time again. If you want to know more about these cool people and their cool country, check out the documentary March of the Gods. It follows the band Rust as they tour the country, talk about their scene, and prepare to play at the Italian festival Solo Macello, making them the first Botswana metal act to play outside of Africa. These guys are going places, and they're going there fast. Let's hope they get to my neck of the woods sometime soon. Rock on, Botswana. Rock on. So when you come looking for rock and roll, you're going to find it. I'm Happy Viking, and you've just been served a frothy pint of metal. Rock on and drink responsibly. Freedom. <laughs>